baby cries, should you rush in and check that they're all right, or do you leave them to self-soothe? New research by Warwick University suggests that letting a baby aged 18 months or less cry it out will have no adverse effect and could actually make them cry less as they get older. Well, the researcher behind this report, Adita Volker, joins us now from the University of Warwick. And on the sofa, we have parenting blocker Layla Preston and the, look at her. She's gorgeous, isn't she? A little six-month-old <laughs> Isla as well. You look a bit cross to me this morning. Not sure about is you. Everything, is everything OK? <laughs> uh, she was um, listening to her comments earlier. Uh, we'll speak to Adita Volker and get the sort of details first of all. But Layla, I wanted, I wanted to start with you by saying, yeah. what you? how many children have you got in total? I've got three. OK, three now, kids, have yeah. you been a sort of self I can't say it. Self soother, <laughs> self or or do you um, allow the kids to cry? How do you how do you do it? I'm I'm a bit of both, and it's all it's all happened naturally. I've never I've never actively taken the road to cry it, get them to cry it out. She's a self soother, so I don't actually have to do anything with her at all. But my eldest was quite difficult to go to sleep. My second was very clingy, and I ended up naturally. Just flocking towards my second one more because he needed it <laughs> because he, because he needed it more and I ended up leaving my eldest anyway I didn't have a choice and so he ended up having to self soothe and it's funny because they're all so different and I just don't think that one size fits all I think that it depends on the child I really do depend think that it depends on the child um, yeah. Dieter Volker can you tell us what are the main findings of your research then yeah, I think most important, good morning, most important is really that for 50 years there has been a discussion between those on attachment theory who say you have to intervene immediately with the baby and you need to continue doing this so to reassure the baby and so that you get a good attachment and a good relationship. And the other extreme was the behaviourists who basically say, well, if you intervene immediately, you just reinforce the crying, you give them attention so it will be better to leave it. And I think what Leila just said in, uh, uh, on the sofa is exactly what we found, that intuitively parents, actually 60%, 65% of parents, would not leave their baby to cry it out ever at term and at, uh, uh, in the first few weeks. But by three months, six months, it actually swung around that about 60% of parents do occasionally let their baby cry it out or let them cry it out often. And we found whether the parents, the 30% who continue to intervene immediately or the ones who let them cry out a few times or often, we found no differences at 18 months in the mother-child interaction, in the quality of attachment and in the behaviour in the children. Babies are very adaptable. We've had so many uh, comments on this today. I'll just read you a couple of them. Um, and both sides of the debate as well, Sal, aren't they? Uh, Amy says, you should never leave your baby to cry. If your baby is crying, you need to find a way to calm the baby down. Lucy says, I have a seven-month-old. We'll leave them on depending on the type of the cry. I can always tell if they're crying because they're really distressed or if it's a general whinge. Lots of people saying they might pop in and sort of put a hand on the baby and then if they calm down, then they'll then leave. And other people say they, they feel the guilt of sort of standing outside the door and listening to the crying and not wanting to go in it's almost impossible there is a middle ground though isn't there there's there's a you know i completely understand this researcher saying that you probably should leave a baby a little bit to cry i never ever could do it myself but there is a middle ground and you do learn almost what the cry is for yeah i i've on the same notion i just can't hear a baby cry i really can't and um i i get this feeling that you know that's their only form of communication and if we don't respond to that, then they learn to that, they, that, that their parents will not come to them. And I, sometimes I find that quite sad. I do find that quite sad. Having said that, because I, we naturally had to leave our eldest uh, to self-soothe because my second one was, you know, needed me more. Uh, he has, he does, he's a bit more independent. I just think that it, it really depends on the child. I think you have to learn uh, what the cry is. So if they're fed, if they've had a nappy change, if they just want to cuddle, mm -hmm. then sometimes it's okay. You just have to know really for your, your child's cry. It's really important, I think. Dita, can I just ask you, when you did this, this research, was there any difference in terms of how long you would leave a baby to cry for? Because what are we talking here? Are we talking 30 seconds a minute? 15 minutes how long yeah i think it's very important to see and parents are very intuitive about it because in the first three to four months babies double their weight and crying is the only way to alert the parents because they cannot like a calf walk behind the calf